My name is Peg Riley. I am the English Language Fellow here at the University. And joining me is Vicky Proano. Vicky, would you introduce yourself, please? Well, I'm a, one of the teachers working with the program College Horizons here at the University. And we're very happy to be here. OK, so before we get started, you can see the title of our webinar is Using Readers Theater to Increase Reading and Oral Fluency in the EFL Classroom. But before we get to that topic, because it's so important, we're going to, we're going to talk about College Horizons um, and the students who've been working on Readers Theater. Vicki, what does College Horizons do? Well, College Horizons is a program uh, sponsored by the U.S. Embassy and what we're working with the UT and University. We are uh, teaching English to students from high schools, especially public high schools that come from a low-income home and that have good grades and good behavior in the high schools. This is these students uh, were chosen by a group of people from the embassy and from the university. And now we have here three groups. We are working with them during two years. And at the end of this program, we hope they can get a sufficiency and eventually they can get a scholarship or something for the university. This is our first program in this, um, with this group, College Horizons. It's similar to the Access program. It has uh, small differences, that's it. Right, so th the students get 10 extra hours a week of English support. Um, and we have three teachers here. Um, I'm sorry, two in Ibarra and one in Chota, which is nearby. Next, next slide, please. Okay, can we go back to the slide before with the photo? Thank you. All right, and you can see here, this is a picture from our Christmas Readers Theater performance. In the, the picture tells everything that's happening. The students are telling a story. Some of them have paper, some of them don't, and it's a Christmas theme. Um, this is from Pablo's play. He's one of the College Horizons teacher, and he, his play was called One of Those Crazy Holidays. Um, what made it really fun to watch this play was all the sarcasm was delivered in clear English, and the students really enjoyed themselves. Vicki, what was the main theme of that play, um, one of those crazy holidays? Well, it was a very fun play, as you said. Um, well, the main idea was giving a special message to the people. This message was uh, to understand and accept your family as it is. And, well, actually, it was very, very nice to see these kids understanding and using some um, common English phrases, using irony, as you say, and really expressing what they mean. It was very, very nice, and everybody laughed a lot with this play. Right. It was the culminating event for the year, so we had three plays, and we'll be talking about um, those three plays today and, and how the teachers set them up. Next slide, please. Okay, and here are the objectives. We're going to define Reader's Theater, list several reasons to use Reader's Theater, explain how to use it, and describe how Reader's Theater increases reading and oral fluency, which is really the key for these College Horizons high school students. Next slide, please. Okay, Miss. This slide, we see a photo. This is from practice before the final presentations. The, the young man standing is the narrator. And this, this play was a Charlie Brown Christmas. So seated in the pink blouse is Lucy giving advice to Charlie Brown. Um, Vicki, your Christmas theater, Reader's Theater, was called Christmas Around the World. How did you start practicing your Reader's Theater with your students? Well, um, when we decided to do this Christmas Reader, it was um, 
very interesting because it's thinking about how people celebrate Christmas around the world in other countries, in other in other cities. And for example, here we just think about how we celebrate, and we never thought about Hawaii or Australia, things like that. Those were some of the topics we talk, we, are, we were talking with the kids first. How people celebrate Christmas in other countries. Then. We took this uh, theater reader. Uh, this is obviously it's American. It talks about the snow. We don't have snow here in Ecuador, but it talks about the snow. It talks about the reindeers. We do uh, talk about reindeers a lot in Christmas. So it was uh, very nice to see them relating this with their own experiences. And they really liked uh, the differences with other countries. So it was very nice for them to learn and share their experiences and compare them with other parts. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned earlier that you started out practicing the script with choral reading. Yeah, we start with choral reading so can everybody understand what we were doing. Uh, the, the, we have three main characters in the reading and the rest uh, it's a chorus of people singing some uh, Christmas carols. But I want them to, all of them to understand the, import, the important part. What is the meaning? What is it about? And what are we expressing with it? So we start with choral reading, then we start doing one by one the practicing and choosing the main characters for the play. Okay, next slide, please. All right. What is Reader's Theater? So very simply, the teacher selects a story for students to tell. The students practice and speak the dialogue in the story. The students themselves choose sound effects, props, and staging, where to stand. Um, and then a little bit about how to, choosing the story. It should be engaging. It should fit the proficiency level of students. And it shouldn't be too long. Since these are high school students, five to 10 minutes um, was just about right. 10 minutes, I wouldn't go over 10 minutes for high school students. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to select just the right one. Vicki, I think all of the Reader's Theater scripts were at just the right level for your students. Have you ever chosen a script that's too hard or too long? Well, uh, when I was reading and searching the correct uh, a reader's theater. It was kind of difficult sometimes because in Christmas there are some words that are not according to the level of students. But when you make a good search, you can find something according to their level and maybe a little higher so they can improve. They can feel good and try to do it better. I don't recommend doing something very high because they will be frustrated. So it's very important for them to get confidence with it. That's the most important thing for me, to get confidence and have them uh, give them the opportunity to stand up in front of someone and feel good and feel happy and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So choosing the right script is a lot of work at the beginning, but it will make all the difference in, in how well the students can perform and if they get too frustrated, um, something with, we want to avoid. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and here you can see most of the cast of A Charlie Brown Christmas, and you can see they're holding scripts. Um, this is key in, in Reader's Theater because they didn't have to memorize lines. Um, Vicki, did that make your students feel less nervous that they, they could have a piece of paper in front of them? Absolutely. Well, I didn't know that before, uh, but yeah, but uh, you told me that. I learned from you this. They don't need to memorize it. We are practicing pronunciation. We are practicing how they express their emotions. So it's, it's good for them to have a script, to have a little help with them, so they can relax a little and focus on what is important fluency, emotions, pronunciation, and that helps a lot. They feel very good having the paper. Sometimes they even look at the paper. They just have it in their hand. But that thing makes them feel confident. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, next slide, please. OK, 
Okay, well, while we're waiting for the slideshow to come back, um, let's talk a little bit about how creative your students were with... Okay, that, that's right, that's the next slide, correct. Examples of readers' theater. Um, what we're going to talk about mainly today are thematic readers' theaters based on Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we did Save the Turkey in Quito for the deputy chief of mission at his house with staff from the embassy. Um, then here in Ibarra, just before Christmas, this three different groups of students performed. They did a Charlie Brown Christmas, Christmas Around the World, it's one of those, and it's one of those crazy holidays. A Baker's Dozen was done by a group of College Horizon students in Esmeraldas. Um, but I remember Save the Turkey was the first Reader's Theater the students did, and they were in front of a large crowd, including the Deputy Chief of Mission of the Embassy in Quito. And something happened that was unexpected. What happened, Vicky? Well, actually it happened that we were supposed to have, the kids were supposed to have their memory helps with them. But uh, we left everything in the car, backpacks, sweaters, everything in the bus, and the bus was very far away from the house. So we started to play and say, let's go kids, let's do it. They said, teacher, we don't have our papers. So we have to improvise and let's do it, you can do it. We just have one script, the, the presenter was reading it, but the rest of them, they didn't have anything at all. So it was great. I was very proud of them because they managed and they do it great. Everybody clapped, everybody was laughing, and everybody was happy. At the end, they were like, teacher, it was not good. I told them, no, it was perfect. You did it by yourself. You didn't need help. So that is something that made me realize also that you can, after you practice, after you know what they are going to express, after they know how are they going to do it, you can do one or two practices without papers and let them be themselves. Let them improvise and they know the language so they can do something related with what they're supposed to be doing and do it differently but good. Mm -hmm. So that also give them confidence. That was what happened. It was very nice but... It was actually very, very funny. Um, and I didn't know the students didn't have their scripts with them. I just noticed that there was some ad-libbing, but it made it even funnier. Um, so it, they did an excellent job in spite of um, being in front of an audience they'd never met before, and speaking English in front of native English speakers. Next slide, please. And this is the slide from the play that Vicky chose, which is called Christmas Around the World. Um, this is the photo of a mother telling her daughters what isn't needed for Christmas. So what isn't needed for Christmas, Vicky? Well, it was very fun to say that the kids, the, the two girls that are in the picture, they were asking their mom, uh, how is Christmas celebrated in Hawaii? Because there's no snow in Hawaii. We can't have Christmas without snow. And the other question was, well, we can't have Christmas without reindeers. How do we celebrate Christmas in Australia? It was very fun because at the end it comes with a very nice idea that you don't need snow, you don't need reindeers. In general, you don't need gifts, you don't need anything at all. You just need to be with your family, with your friends, have a good relationship, have a good uh, meeting with them and enjoy the time with them. So that was the principal idea of the topic and they really like it, they do it very well. about Christmas around the world, you added costumes and video clips. So how do you think this made the, the Reader's Theater more understandable for the audience? Well, actually it was very useful because yeah, we wear Hawaiian costumes and we show some slides with kangaroos, especially with, for, uh, to express the songs, to make them understand what is the song about. The first song we had, it was uh, Melikali Kimaka, it's the name of the song, it's in Hawaiian, it's supposed to be Merry Christmas in Hawaiian. So all the girls were wearing like Hawaiian girls and moving their hands and dancing in Hawaiian while they're singing, so it's obviously a Hawaiian song. The other one was uh, Six White Boomers, so we presented slides 
about the six white boomers. So everybody can know that the six white boomers are the six white kangaroos. So it's not so um, typical here. So you don't hear it a lot. So people that want know that it's about that. That's why it helps a lot. And also we have the, the lyrics of the song. So the rest of the people can sing along with us. So that was also very exciting. And the last song? Well, the last song was all. Of course, the last song was in Spanish, was Merry Christmas, and uh, Que Tengas Felices Fiestas in Spanish. So, because the last one was, we can't have Christmas without English. How can we sing Christmas carols? So the mother explained, we can sing Christmas carols in every other language. Right. So they, they, we all sang in Spanish, Spanish and in English. English. Which was really fun. Next slide, please. Simple reasons. Students have fun with English. They're not memorizing, they're not doing grammar, they're not filling in blanks. It helps them build self esteem and confidence so they can present in front of an audience, which can be very um, difficult for somebody who's a teenager and doesn't speak English as a first language. It improves reading and pronunciation skills. Vicki, Vicki how did you work on those? Filler sounds like ah uh, and mm, and really. Oh well, that was um, something very easy with this room. I was um, thinking about it because these guys are really, really interested in learning. So they really got an effort to it. They are great guys. But I have some problems with other classrooms, bigger classrooms and school and students from university. So I noticed that they feel a little uh, nervous when they have to express their their feelings. When you ask them something personal, it's kind of difficult for them to express exactly. So I decided to start using a small readers, uh, theaters reader, so they can practice and they can express like another person, and they feel really comfortable with that. Actually, it's kind of difficult, so they start reading something without emotion. So when you tell them it's not you, it's a character, so you're going to be um, John today and Anna, for example, and they feel like that it's not themselves expressing, they can do it better. And it's very good for them and it's very easy in this way to teach them how to express emotions. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned that um, you had to exaggerate the filler words so students weren't just saying, oh, yeah, really? Yeah, that was the problem that I had in my university classes. They were mm -hmm. just reading, oh, yeah, good, really great. So you have to stand up in front and exaggerate and say, you, no, come on, it's like, yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. So it's also a lot of work, but when you do it and you have the results that you can see with them, with them it's perfect, it's great. Okay. Um, I think the Reader's Theatre, the performances, has been very beneficial to your students, Vicki. Um, what do you think are the most important gains they've made? Well, actually, uh, for me it was uh, pronunciation, how to express their feelings, and something very important is confidence. So, uh, it's very difficult to, for anybody to stand up in front of an audience. And it's even worse if you are a teenager, and if you are speaking in another language. So even in your own language, for some people, it's difficult to stand up in front. For some students have, have this problem. So when theaters really helped me a lot, I had a girl who had um, some pronunciation problems, and actually it was punctuation problems too. But it was like, because she was so stressed, she was so nervous. So she was running, she was speaking so fast that you couldn't even get the idea. But explaining her that relax, practice, it's just a presentation, come on, you can do it, and making her realize about the problem, she improved a lot, and she was one of the best presenters in the play. So I was so happy because of this. And obviously pronunciation is excellent, it's excellent for them. They feel really good, and they can do it slowly, and they feel confident about standing in front of an audience. I think that the costumes also help, because it's like not you, it's like 
someone else performing something, not expressing your own. Later, when they gain the confidence, we can go ahead and they can express by themselves in front of not and anybody, I think. Okay, great. And then the, the final point on this slide is universal themes can be understood regardless of culture. And we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, later on. Let's go to the next slide, please. Here are Vicky students in with their lace and Hawaiian skirts singing the Hawaiian Christmas song, which I can't pronounce. <laughs> um, did your students memorize the words to that song? Well, actually, they did. They did it by themselves. I told them that it was OK if they have paper with them to read and sing the song along. But actually, as they were dancing, they were moving their hands and things like that, they decided to memorize it. So all of them just stand up in front with no papers and sand. It was not a re required to do that. They were, um, they were allowed to have a paper, but they didn't want to do it. So they are very nice guys. They really like to work. So I'm very happy with the result they are having. Yeah, it sounds like they, they had a lot of fun. And it didn't, they didn't have to even worry about memorizing not the Christmas song in, in Hawaiian. Next slide, please. Right, here's the second slide of why to use reader's theater. Students use their imagination to portray their characters. So, uh, for example, in the play that Pablo did, it's one of those crazy holidays. The uncle was really angry, and some of the other characters had different, they, they portrayed different emotions. So the students get into the character and play the emotions, which is Vicky said earlier, um, when they're in costume and they're another person, it's much easier, and they seem to have a lot of fun with it. We've said this, I think, a little bit earlier. Um, it's okay to use scripts. There's no need to memorize. Um, somebody's asking about where the scripts are. Susan, uh, at the end, I'm going to show you some links, and the, the most frequent one is, um, I think his first name is Andrew, Andrew Shepard. Uh, he, he has a big collection of readers' theaters plays all ready to go at different levels. Okay, so, so it's okay to use the scripts, no need to memorize. It's a team effort, students support each other, and the bottom line, it's really fun. This wasn't work for the students. They, you could see they were having a lot of fun performing, and Vicki mentioned how they worked as a team when she wasn't available one day. Can you tell us about that? Well, yeah. One day I was in charge of other activities here in the university. I wasn't able to be with them. I just explained them what I was supposed to do, but practicing the play and practicing the songs, the Christmas carols. And I in charge every one of them of something. So when I arrived, I was very glad to see them uh, in circle, talking about the play, practicing, and helping each other, saying, OK, you have to speak a little louder, uh, pronounce this, open your mouth, move your hands, things like that. They were really, really engaged on having a great presentation, so they really work as a team. Mm -hmm. Everybody help each other. If someone has a problem with one pronunciation or something, there was someone helping them, always. So I was very happy with them. Okay, I see that Robert in Peru asked or made a comment that the language must be a little beyond the student's language level. And we are going to get to that in a few slides, and, and, and I agree with you. Just a, just a little bit harder than what they can manage. And with the, the teachers did a really good job in choosing these scripts because they weren't too hard to make so that the students got frustrated. But that's a very good point, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but before we go to the next slide, Vicki, how many hours do you think you spent preparing the students for their play? 
Well, we I think in total we spent about ten hours preparing because we were uh, we were working during these days, so we were not just practicing. So we used maybe the thirty minutes at the end of the class or the forty minutes at the end of the class, and maybe the last two days were like more practice, one hour. But in total, I guess it's like ten hours. Okay. And next slide, please. Next slide. Oh, there we go. Okay, and here you can see something you've already seen before during rehearsal. You saw this same photo. This is during the play. Um, you see the narrator behind a podium. Charlie Brown dressed in a coat and a stocking cap. And then Lucy giving advice to poor Charlie Brown. Um, one thing that was interesting about doing this play was the teacher and the students had never heard of Charlie Brown and had never seen a Charlie Brown Christmas. So I googled Charlie Brown, it's a Charlie, or a Charlie Brown Christmas on YouTube, and the students got an idea about what Charlie Brown was like. They realized he was pretty much sad quite a bit. They learned about Snoopy, Schroeder, um, the Snoopy dance, and basically how everyone supports Charlie Brown in the end. But it didn't occur to me that they, the students here, would never have heard of Charlie Brown. Um, Vicky's generation has, yeah. but the, the younger children haven't. Yeah, that was something also interesting for me because uh, I knew Charlie Brown already, but they were like, who's that one? But now, um, when Pat showed them the link and the information about Charlie Brown, they saw it really, they, they really understood what it was about. So it was easier for them to get the emotions and the expressions they needed to do it. Okay, and here David in, I don't know where, I'm not sure where David is, is from, but he's asking, how can you deal Reader's Theater with a shy student? And that's an actual, excellent question, because a lot of these students are really shy. Um, Vicky, how did you deal with that? Well, actually, I think that most of my students are shy. <laughs> I have that problem. They are very quiet. It's a quiet classroom. They work excellent, but they don't are kind of outgoing, really. But uh, the thing is that they really like to participate. I don't know if a shy student, when the shy student is willing to participate, he's going to do it. Obviously, it's more difficult for him or for her. Uh, stand up in front of the public. There are some clues that you can give your students, uh, especially with the, one of the students that was kind of afraid or scared of standing in front. I was giving he, her some ideas about don't look at the audience, look at a black point in the end of the room, look at the person who are you, you are talking with, because it's important to look at the person that is in front of you and talk to that person. Imagine that it's that just you and your friend having a conversation. So that was better for them uh, because um, some of them, it's well, I know some people are very shy and it's very difficult for them to stand up in front. But if you give them some clues, they are going to do it very well. And the, the most important thing is to have confidence in themselves. Doesn't matter if we make mistakes. If we make a mistake, we go on. It's not the end of the world. And just look at the person that is in front of you and talk to that person. It's a normal conversation. OK, and Susan, okay, the, Susan is making a comment here that shy ones are kept safe in Reader's Theater. It's like being in a choir where nobody's exposed, different from being on a stage. And I, I would agree with that. It, it gives the students a chance to use their voices but not be alone. And we also talked about having wearing the costumes and playing a role allowed the students to forget some of their shyness. And these students support each other a lot. So they work well together. Um, and I think you know being able to use a script, wear a costume, and be with their friends made it all much easier. Yeah. And then Shupresa. I'm sorry, Alfredo. 
I, I'm not sure who's making the comment. Reader's theater provides students not only with reading skills, but also with speaking and writing skills. I agree with it, definitely with the reading and speaking. Um, I don't think the students worked on writing on this reader's theater, but we will talk about that in a little bit. Well, they do as everything is related, I think that we can say that when they are improvising, they are creating. Mm -hmm. So we can write it down or something. But uh, we can do the writing skill to create something by themselves. So to help them to create their own, their own reader theater. Mm -hmm. So I can agree. I can say that we can do it. We can also create a new something new for them. They can we can ask them what would you like to present? Let's write something about it. What is going to be the topic? Write an object for the uh, theater's reader. Okay, we talked about this a little bit earlier and wondered what the students would choose. Now these are all high school students, ages from about fourteen to seventeen. Yeah. Now it's 15 to 17. 15 to 17, OK. So we've got on the younger end, a little less mature, and then the older end where they're almost adults. And we decided they would probably write a play about their daily lives, struggle with family, going to school, friends. Um, but, but it would probably, probably be very interesting. So that is in the future for the College Horizon students here is writing their own readers' theater. OK, next slide, please. OK, and here, here, here are the, the procedure. This is very basic, and you can change it to fit your classroom. You can assign the roles before the first reading or do what Vicky did um, Vicky, how did you manage well, that? Well, I first make the reading all together. Right. And then um, I ask who wants to be one of the characters, who wants to be the mother, who wants to be the father, or the. Well, there are three characters in my play uh, mother and two girls. Could be father and two boys, whatever. So they were me, me, me. They took some papers, they took some scripts, and they start practicing for a few minutes. And everybody helped with like a casting to choose the best one. So everybody stand up in front and act. And we were saying, yeah, good, you can do it. You can do this one. I like to do this one. And actually, it was one of the students that already presented a theater, uh, a reader theater before. Uh, he was also chosen for this one by his classmates. But he said, teacher, I already present mine. So we, we give the chance to the other student. Uh, it was very good. He says, no, I did it already. So it was very nice. They are also thinking about them, the friends, to encourage them to do it. And it's like, it's OK. It's not my turn today, but then later it's going to be my time to present something. Yeah, so it's, she didn't have to sign roles in this case. I think probably in the first one, Save the Turkey, you did. Yeah, in the and first then, one, it was like, please, you do this, you do that. But in this one, it was like everybody deciding together. Yeah, Robert in Peru says it's like being in disguise. They love that. I, I agree. Yes, yes, they love it. They I let them choose the disguise. I just tell them, you are a mother. You have to decide what to wear. And the disguise were perfect. You are a little girl. They even bring little dolls for the play. Mm -hmm. So it's great. They really love to do that. Uh -huh. And Susan also mentioned that she tries to be sensitive with the students, but also pushes them. And they usually respond. And I think that is good teaching. And those are good qualities of a good teacher so the students don't feel pressured. And really, honestly, watching this as an audience per audience member, I could see how much fun they were having. They, they just were really enjoying themselves, and, and it wasn't painful in any way. So that was really fun to see. OK, so we, we have assigned the roles, or do casting like Vicky did, and go through the text together. This, um, might take several readings. You can have pairs work together. You can have them work in small groups. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have to just practice their line. They can practice other lines also. Then I think probably the hardest is working on pronunciation, pausing, intonation, and adding emotion to their character. 
And finally, perform for an audience, which they have um, each time. So Vicki, what did you spend the most time on with your students? Well, actually with them, I spent more on uh, pronunciation, on stopping, especially that. As I told you, there was my student, my, uh, one of my students, she was very scared about talking, so she was speaking very fast. So on passing, pronunciation, intonation, and emotions, it was the most important. And also give them confidence. Tell them they can do it. Tell them you can do it. It's easy. Come on. And encourage them to do it. Um, it's also very important, I think, that I didn't spend time with them a lot. I spent more time searching the correct script. Because you have to read a lot, find a lot of scripts before you choose one. So it has to be interested for them. If it's not interested, they are not going to do it with emotion. OK, Robert in Peru says, why assign roles first? It's a matter of choosing and knowing which students would perform better. Uh, and that is what Vicky said. So you don't, you don't have to follow this procedure. These are, this is just kind of a simple outline. Um, what, you know your classroom best, so choose what works for you. Um, what, let's see, Anna in Lima has a question and she wants to know, what, for what level is this intended? Today, we're talking about students who are aged 15 to 17 and are in high school. But you can do reader's theater with any children who can read. And Susan just pointed out that she's done it with kindergarten through adults. So yeah. there, are, there are websites that have scripts for young children. And then there are ones that are much more difficult than the high school level that you could do. Um, it's just a matter of what your, your, your students' background knowledge and what they enjoy. Those are great questions, so thank you. Let's go on to the next slide, please. OK, selecting text. You want to select an authentic text. Divide the text into the number of parts for which you have readers. Um, and in some cases, like Vicky's, where there were only three main parts, how did you use your other, the other students? How did they participate? Well, actually, the, the plates um, with some Christmas carols in it, the picture we just saw. So the rest of the students have to go with the Christmas carols that are going to be the chorus. So it was good. Where one group was playing, the three girls were performing. And when the time of the Christmas carol comes, they were ready to sing. Okay. And then you can, of course, choose the ready-made Reader's Theater script that I referred to earlier. And you'll see in a few minutes when we get to the references. The script should be engaging for your students and slightly more advanced than your students' reading level, as one of the listeners has pointed out. OK. And we have, let's, next slide, please. OK, and this, this is the end of A Charlie Brown Christmas. And you can see Charlie Brown with his decorated Christmas tree. Next to him is Snoopy. And Snoopy decided to wear sunglasses, which I thought was, was pretty interesting. And then farther down, you can see Lucy. And next to Lucy is Sally, Charlie Brown's sister. This is at the very end of the play when everyone sings, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You can see that just briefly in the background. So the teacher decided to show the lyrics so everyone in the audience could sing along, which was a lot of fun. I'm just looking at a comment here from Robert in Peru who says, giving them such confidence, to my mind, is a key to successful students. Good ideas. I agree. I think that they have gained a lot of confidence and poise in um, performing the Reader's Theater. Vicky, do yeah. you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree completely. Uh, the most important thing is confidence. 
um, I told them, um, sometimes we can make mistakes, we can say something wrong, but as long as you say it with uh, good confidence, you say it uh, with a good emotion thing, it will be understood. So the first thing is confidence for our students. And obviously this is going to be also used in class, in their learning, in their daily life daily life, so uh, it's good for them to do these activities to have more confidence with them. Good. Next slide, please. Okay, so here are some final thoughts. Reader's theater can be used with any age group and proficiency level, from reader, beginning readers to adults. Choosing the right story is key, which Vicki pointed out, and I, and I completely agree with. I actually chose a reader's theater that was way too difficult for the students um, in Esmeraldas, and it turned out not to work at all. And Susan is saying they have such fun in a safe atmosphere that they beg for more. Is that true, Vicki? Well, actually, yes. They really like it. That is something important, a safe atmosphere. You have to encourage a good relationship with, uh, among your students. That's important. So nobody is more, nobody is less. Everybody are equal. We all we are all learning. Even the teacher is there for, with them learning. They have great ideas. They have excellent ideas. I, for example, with my girls in the play, I told them they can have the script. One of my girls says, "Not teacher. I don't want to have a script. I just want to do it myself. Perfect." The other girls, they have some dolls here, so they put a script on the doll's dress. So it was a great idea. Nobody noticed the script, the small script, the small help was there. The other one had a teddy bear, so he put it there. So they were playing with the teddy bear as they were performing, and it was great. So we learned from them too. And the atmosphere is the best, best idea, to have a good atmosphere and a safe atmosphere. Yeah. And let's see, we talked about choosing the right story, that's key. Um, for the one that I chose that was much too difficult, I learned my lesson. It was too long, it had too much history in it. This was in Esmeralda, so Vicky didn't see it. But uh, it, it is, just turned out really bad. Um, Reader's Theater reduces anxiety for more timid students, especially when they can hide their scripts on, on a prop that they're holding, like a doll or in their baseball cap. All of the students figured out a way to hide their script, but they were also free to hold it in front of them as well. Students use their imaginations to bring stories to life. Students improve both reading and pronunciation skills. And then finally, I think the, the most important thing is students recognize the words and their meaning and the meaning of a story. So they're not just reciting lines. They're performing a play that they're bringing to life with their own emotions, and they understand the meaning of the story. So, Vicki, if, if I asked one of your students to, to recount, retell the story of the play you did, Christmas Around the World, do you think they'd still be able to do it today? Yeah, I'm completely sure they can do it. Uh, they really understood what we were doing, they got the idea, and they, I'm all, also really confident about that they are going to be able to give you uh, small information about the other two plays that they watched because they were so clear, so understandable. At the end of the program, some of my students came and said, "Teacher, the play from uh, from the kids uh, from Chota Valley was great. It was very funny." So I, I asked them, "Do you like it?" Yeah. What's the most important part for you? And they told me something about it. So I was very happy. They really got the idea from all the plays. So that, that tells you a lot when the students can understand each other and enjoy sarcasm and humor in a second language, uh, that's really exciting for teachers and students. And David is commenting that, um, responding to Susan about the key point is the atmosphere in class. Students are very smart, they only need the opportunity to show it. I hope. Someday, we'll have summary English classes on the cultural newspapers. I'm not sure what cultural newspapers are, so maybe David could explain a little bit more. But I completely agree. 
that is let the students go and, and they will be creative, they will perform, and um, you'll be surprised. I was so surprised and happy when I saw the final production that it's just really rewarding to watch. Yeah, yeah, it was very good. And all, as I, I was talking to you before, um, they are very creative. Sometimes they really want to include something in the play that it's from them. So I remember the first play with uh, the, uh, Save the Turkey. Save the Turkey. Save the Turkey. Well, the, the main character was played by one of my students, Josue, and he, he includes some expressions from him, he was like, he was in the house arriving to home. In the play, he didn't say that. He was like, oh, honey, to the wife or something. Kind of jokes he made. And he, it was very fun, and he felt very, very nice with that. So everybody was trying to include something extra. When they saw someone doing something and it works, everyone's tried to do it. I was, teacher, can I say this? What if I say that? I was like, do it. It's a great idea. So we can let them to develop and it's going to be great results. OK, and the final slide, please. And here are the references. If you would like to read an article on story theater, which is very similar to reader's theater, there is an article in the English Teaching Forum. So the hyperlinks should work just fine. You can read it. Um, I found it really interesting, and I got the gentleman's name wrong. This the person with all the readers theater script. His name is Aaron Shepard, and he, he just has he has many many scripts to choose from. Then, the, if you want to look at one of those crazy holidays, which is the one that Pablo performed or his students performed, you can see this is done by Skit Guys, so this is a different source. And then finally, there was a webinar in 2012 on Reader's Theater for EFL Classrooms if you're interested in, in more information. This one, I think for some reason, it wasn't recorded, but you can see the slideshow. OK, um, we're going to look at some comments here. What about reflecting on what they've just done? They can now realize that public speaking is not that difficult. I think that was Robert. Public speaking, right? Yeah. Do you think they could transfer the skills they learned in Reader's Theater to giving a speech? Yeah, absolutely, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I think that it is the, this is the first part, to give them confidence and to teach them how to express themselves. As I say, emotions are very important. So it's the first part to do it. So um, I think that after this, we can go beyond and go to public speech perfectly. OK, and Susan says, give them an opportunity, and you have self-evaluation. Uh, sounds like the students were pretty they, they, they evaluated themselves yeah. Go, yeah, that's right. as you went along, right? As you went along, they go evaluating, they go um, seeing each other, and they are also they also want to do it good, want to perform it good. So I heard from one of the kids in Chota Valley, they 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 came to me and said, what do you think about uh, the webinar? Uh, so what do you think about the play teacher? That was like, great. I really like it. It was very fun. And he said, no, teacher, it was not so good. We could have done it better. It was a really, for me, it was perfect. And I congratulate him. But he was, no, I think I, we can do it better. So next time, we are going to do it better. It's good for you. It's that emotion that they express, trying to do things better. That's perfect. Yeah, we're just reading through the the comments here. Susan is also wondering what the cultural newspapers are. If we 
And she also made a comment that, oops, we have to scroll up one minute. It's OK to make mistakes, but it's best to plan really well. So we don't plan to fail, only fail to plan. And I think even with mistakes, the students did a fabulous job. And I didn't necessarily notice the mistakes. Yeah, sometimes, I, as I told him, uh, maybe he knows he missed something, he did something wrong. But the rest of people that are watching the play, they don't know the, the script. So for you, if it has sense, and if you can manage to go through it with sense and clear speech, it's going to be perfect. OK, David M. Improve is talking about the cultural newspapers. And he writes, in other words, what I want to say is that in our country, Peru, everybody agrees that learning English is important. But when you open the newspapers, there aren't, there isn't information that promotes English language. OK, that's, oh. that's a good point. Um, what kind of information would you like to see, like an English language section, um, like a pull-out section only in English? And then, Shapresa mm -hmm. says, students learn the new vocabulary in context, thus they learn how to use the words in a certain language environment, which yeah. is that's true. Right, that's right. And they can use this after the play, not just for the play, in class, in their normal talks. So it's very good, especially the, uh, I think that the one that Pablo did, it was great expressions that I'm sure they are going to use it outside the play, in the classroom. Right, the, the, the sarcasm they used in It's One of Those Crazy Holidays. Language and context, yep, good activity. It's always good to have context, which is why we also talked about using props and costumes and having the lyrics of music available for the audience so everybody can understand and enjoy the reader's theater. OK. Vicky, do you have any final thoughts? Oh, well, uh, actually, I really enjoy doing uh, these activities. My students enjoy them a lot, too. I think that it's a good, good opportunity to have them practice speaking pronunciation. And beyond, we can have uh, maybe um, some uh, readers theater made by themselves, and also maybe some speeches. So I think that it's a good start to encourage our students to express themselves, express their emotions, and express, express themselves in front of the public or to speak. Sometimes it's very difficult to make them speak. Uh, you are giving them some information, and you don't have sometimes the reaction from them. So with these activities, they are learning little by little how can they react. They are going to be confident, and they can do it very good. And going back to what one of the listeners wrote about English being important, but not being a part of the newspapers. Oh, well, the, I, think, that, I think daily life or things like that. Yeah. I think that it's Is like... Is that true uh, here, too? Well, now uh, things are changing here. Mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, people is realizing uh, that English is very important now most High schools, uh, schools have an English program, at least a basic one. So, and I don't know, actually our government is very interested in develop English very good. So um, I think that with the time, we're going to have more people interested in English. Uh, some students in the university want to get a master's degree, want to go on a scholarship, and they need English. Even if the scholarship is a basic thing or a basic study in another country, English is required. So nowadays, you can realize that little by little, people is having it's giving to English the importance that they have. Mm -hmm. Robert makes Robert from Peru makes the point that we don't need to correct students' mistakes or slips on the spot, but wait for them to finish and correct the slips later, um, which is excellent advice. If you stop the students every time they make a mistake. 
they'll get frustrated and not want to continue speaking or practicing. So thanks for that point, Robert. And Susan says, I think we don't have to add on, but rather change the methodology. Um, maybe you can clarify what you mean by that. Change the methodology in the way that English is taught in South America? Let's see, and then Shapresa, Shapresa says, it's true, exams through Reader's Theater makes learning interesting and develops the student's performance in the foreign language. Now, have you, have you did you give them any kind of grade? Well, uh, actually, no. It was like just for fun. <laughs> this place, these two plays, it was just for fun. The one that we did in um, uh, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. that was a, a, a grade. But this one, no. We were just enjoying it, and they were very happy with doing it. Yeah, actually, we didn't we didn't give him we didn't, we didn't give them a break. Right. It was like I said, it was a planning event for this semester, yeah. and it was more a celebration of Christmas. Yeah, it was like a celebration, so everyone was happy to do it. Everybody was happy and lighthearted, and um, it was just a really fun day. Okay, so we're, we're almost out of time. Final thoughts. Well, um, actually, um, I'm very, very happy with the development my students did here. And um, I really uh, want to continue using this. Um, it will be good to have two or more, two more plays, and maybe the Number three will be something that comes out from them. So I don't think that we need a special occasion, Christmas or Thanksgiving to do it. So we can prepare one just for fun when we want to, and to practice, to enjoy, or to share with other classes. I don't think we don't even need an auditorium to present it. Why we practice, we pr prepare with our class something, something special and small, and visit someone else's classroom? visit a colleague classroom and interact with our students, present our small program with other students, and the other students also can have the opportunity to watch, uh, have make questions, share the emotions and things like that. So I think it's a good idea also to have these small activities among colleagues. So organizing your school, in your universities, in your classes, with your friends, and share these things. It's very important. So you can um, have also maybe two classes together sharing activities, sharing plays, and they can uh, have more advantages, get more advantage with this, uh, because they are knowing more people, uh, expressing themselves in front of different people and maybe strange people, and they get more confidence. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important confidence here. And as someone said, the atmosphere in the classroom, that is the key point. If you have a good atmosphere, everyone is going to feel happy, good, and they are going to be willing to do things. Here. We have one final comment that we can fit in from Robert in Peru. He says, Reader's Theater reminds me of the CLIL, Contextualized Language Integrated Learning Methodology. Methodology. Students learn the four skills in one activity, and those four skills seem to be interwoven, which is absolutely true. Um, we didn't, there wasn't a lot of writing, yeah, no. but there was all the other skills were, were present, and um, Vicki will be moving on from there, and the other College Horizons teachers also will be moving on from there. So thank you very much for joining me today, Vicki. Thank you, Beth, for and inviting me. I really enjoy watching your students grow over the last few months as they become less shy and we're willing to perform in Quito and on the stage here yeah. at UTM. I think they did a fabulous job and we look forward to their next play. Thank you so much and we are very happy to do this job. We're very happy to show plays to everybody and I hope this information will help you to and encourage you to do it in your classroom. It's a great, great resource, a great opportunity to work with your students.